In this hobby, we are often laser focused on painting our models as fast as we can so that we can complete our army or our project and just dive straight into whatever activity is next. It's only now that I'm starting to learn to get the most out of the hobby and find some extra ways to make it fun for me and for those around me. Today isn't something groundbreaking or new, but I wanna take you step by step on a guide on how to make your own hobby memento that you can complete between your next two projects. Let's get straight into the action because we can discuss more as we paint. Today, we are designing and painting a model still on the sprue that we can display in our home or in our hobby space. Hold up, before you put paint on anything, spend a little bit of time thinking about something that you would be excited to paint and that would mean something to you or to someone close to you in the hobby. I've had this idea bubbling around for a couple of months, but it wasn't until I had the idea to paint this as a present for one of my boys that I was truly hooked on the idea and excited to sit down and paint. He collects, paints and plays Ultramarines. So a standard character model here will be something easy and nice looking for us to tackle in this video. But characters can be quite expensive from Games Workshop, so it's hard to justify being able to paint one of these up when it will never see the tabletop. So if price is a factor for you, well Games Workshop has done you a solid favour and released about 22 different kinds of Primaris Lieutenant and included them in every single box set. So they can be pretty easy to find now. I've picked out the Lieutenant from the Indominus box set. The reasons being that there are so many of these around it was easy to get a hold of and more importantly, this is the period of time when he joined the hobby, so I'm hoping that later on there'll be an emotional significance for him in having this model. But why this Lieutenant over the other 47 that Games Workshop have available? Well, I want it to look cool. Make sure that you actually spend time and look at how the model presents on the sprue, rather than how it looks when it's pieced together. I have a look at the sprue, and the majority of the pieces are orientated to one side, so that I won't have big boring gaps that I need to paint. I'm priming with black for a couple of reasons. Starting with a darker foundation helps me to create a stronger contrast with my light colour edged highlights. I'm happy for the whole sprue to be black, but you could use either grey or mask off your pieces if you want the sprue to remain in the unpainted grey look. I'm making a point of not using an airbrush in this video, so that you can see how easy it will be to achieve a nice looking model without one. Well. I say that, then I immediately use an airbrush for the base coat because I'm lazy. You can brush your base coat on. Ignore me, I've misled you, I cannot be trusted. My base coat is McCrag Blue. I don't find this colour to be very exciting or dynamic for ultramarines. Yeah, it's the classic, but if you're after something more vibrant for yours, have a look at Thousand Suns Blue. I'm tidying up the overspray with black and then returning to the armour panels. Next I'm mixing together my Crag Blue and Incubi Darkness to create a darker version of my base coat. I'm painting this in the deeper recessed panel areas. It's important at this stage that you decide where you want the direction of the light to be coming from. I've decided that I will picture the model being completely assembled and standing upright, so shadows and highlights will reflect this. I'm saving half the time of this entire project by only painting one side of the sprue. I'm going to display the end result with one side showing, so why paint something that can't be seen? Using black, I'm painting in panel lines, vents, and also any part of the model that we normally wouldn't see, like a foundation joining section of a piece. Calador Sky and McCrag Blue, mixed together as the first highlight. This is your model, so paint it however you like. And if you already collect and paint Space Marines, keep it in your own style with the techniques you're familiar with. I'm electing to paint this Marine using mostly the Games Workshop recommended techniques for us beginners. This means the majority of the armor panels remain in McCrag Blue and the highlights are thin and along the edge. Calador Sky on its own will be a thinner and brighter highlight. 
I'm painting the same areas of the armor, however this time I'm painting less and trying to make it sharper. With the magic of editing, let me try and put something as a visual aid on the screen. There. Nailed it. Can you believe this channel runs on a budget of $12 a month? If you want to push your highlight one step further in one quick step, then Fenrisian Grey as a third and even thinner highlight is your answer. I focus on the corners of armour because this is making quite a strong contrast from the near black shadows to now a near white edge highlight. I love painting battle damage, however this model is going to be assembly line new. You could go either way. Showing a deconstructed battle hardened leader I think is a great idea, but the story I want to tell is a new character being created by the war machine and then sent to the front line. I reckon I'm probably overthinking it. Do whatever looks cool. The shield. Half the reason I picked this model was because of the large good looking shield that will afford me the opportunity to paint something other than ultramarines blue. My opinion on white paints is that I prefer to use the Vallejo range. I find that they last a long time. These ones being a couple of years old already and they paint on nicely. What I mean by that is they aren't watery, they don't have lumpy or chalky feels to them. So if you're looking for one or two white paints, may I recommend an off-white and a bright white of some description. Here I'm using the off-white as my base coat for the shield. Thin this a little and paint multiple layers. You won't be able to paint over the darker colour with one or two layers, so take your time and chip away at it. I'm not worried about being neat yet, because I have more base coating to come in a minute. I'm thinning down Agrax Earthshade to make a shade with less intensity. I'm painting this around the rivets, in the panel lines, and also around the centre decorations of the shield. I return to the off-white that's still on my wet palette, and I tidy up around where I applied the wash so that it's nice and neat. We used off-white as the base colour, so that we still had room to go brighter. Now I'm using Arctic White from Vallejo as the highlight colour for the shield. Thin brush, thin lines, and take your time. A gunmetal metallic for parts such as armour joints, backpack, vents, and buttons the weapon details and all of the rivets across the shield. I'm using Lead Belcher, but you can't go wrong with any gunmetal metallic colour. A Nun Oil Wash over the top adds shadows to each of these parts and creates depth for our model. Runefang Steel is a bright silver colour, and I'm painting this the same way I painted my other highlights. I find painting with metallics a little frustrating, so rather than thinning them, I simply add some to my wet palette and a small amount to my brush and find that this makes them manageable. Retributor Gold is the base colour for the gold sections. I use Retributor when I want a bright over the top Hollywood looking gold. If you would like yours darker, then replace this step with a base coat of Balthazar Gold and a highlight later with Retributor. Gold and white look great together on a shield or weapon against a darker model, so I'm painting all of the trim for the shield in gold as well. Fire Slayer Flesh is from the Contrast range. This is a brown paint but has red mixed in. Obviously great for flesh, but I love the warmth that it brings when shading gold. On its own, it can be too overpowering, so I mix contrast medium on my palette and then I paint them on.
Auric Armor Gold is the first highlight color. We will go even brighter shortly, so rather than a crisp edge highlight here, I'm thinning the gold a little and glazing it across some of the larger raised areas. I want some of the shadows to be even darker, and to achieve this I'm thinning down Rhinox Hide and painting this in the panel lines and then along the bottom edges of the shield decorations. The contrast mix has covered the whole area, but this is a thin, deliberate shadow. Runefang Steel is my edge highlight for the grey metallics and also for the gold. The thinner and sharper here, the better. Preparing the plasma pistol and it's an opportunity for more added character. I will end up looking at a glow effect but for now, I'm just blocking out the black casing and the metals. The fabrics such as the robes and parchments are being based with Xandri dust. And as you can see, I'm using the same techniques across the remaining areas of the model. Despite me wanting the model to look factory sealed new, I'm going to provide a realistic fabric look to all of the pouches. I'm painting in a hash lined non-uniform pattern along the edges. I think this helps the pouches look more like leather that have been worn along those edges. I've realised that the Lieutenant would have red and white thick stripes along the centre of the helmet, so I'm adding these in now. No airbrush remember, so rather than my new favourite way of airbrushing on the acrylic inks, I'm instead going to paint them on the coils of the plasma pistol. Titanium white from Liquitex first, and once dried I cover with magenta acrylic ink. Importantly, this one from Liquitex is semi-transparent, so it is tinting the white base rather than covering it. To bring back a sense of heat, I add a small amount of white between the coils and where the coils meet the casing. No free hand attempts today, but I'll decorate one of the shoulders with a decal. There we go. I picked out a photo frame that is a deep cut box style that'll fit the whole mini inside. Let's see how it looks. I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's a way of combining the how to paint an ultramarine topic with finding a creative way for you and those around you to enjoy the hobby. You know what to do if you'd like to see more, but from me, thank you so much for your support and I'll see you on the next one.